tell you about some of my permaculture gardening ideas and show you the arrival of our two new sheep. My son picked up a truckload of wood chips for me. I'm going to mulch one of my vegetable gardens with this. One of the things that I do in my vegetable garden is to save some of the plants that are going to seed in fall and let them reseed themselves. This looks like a messy garden but supplies us with lots of food in the winter with no effort. I have kind of a wild garden. It plants itself this time of year. Right here we have a bunch of cilantro that just came up from, this is the, the parent plant right here. So we have a lot of weeds and things that have come up on their own. In this area, there's not too much. We're going to put some more wood chips here on this path so we can maintain a path. Right here we have some sorrel growing. I love sorrel because it's a perennial and it gives a lot of greens. And you can see this little ecosystem right here where there's a parent plant on top of a bunch of cilantro and borge that's growing and right next to it there isn't anything because it's a little bit colder so the cilantro didn't come up. So this is the next path right through here. Don't have too much growing in the path. This one here we have green onions and down below the green onions are a lot of little baby onions. See those growing out of the path. So I may cover most of those up or dig them up and use them. And we just mulched this path. I still have a couple more. This one here has arugula growing all in the middle of the path and that's going to get ripped out because we don't need it. We have a lot of arugula everywhere. Here's another path and the last path. And I'll show you after I get it mulched. One permaculture idea is to observe nature and use the processes of nature to your advantage. Covering this path with wood chips saves me a lot of time. I don't have to weed. I got one truckload worth of wood chips onto the garden and it's looking better. I apologize that the video is so dark right here. My dog wants my attention. It's a buffy dog. I left some wood chips in the back of the truck here because we're going to use them when we pick up our two sheep tomorrow. I apologize for not getting any footage of picking the sheep up. It was kind of crazy getting a adult 200 pound sheep that didn't want to be caught into the truck. It was uh, chaos. Um, Joanne at the ranch had gotten them put into a little area so it wasn't hard to get our hands on the sheep but the sheep was scared, banged herself around, so it was kind of uh, a little bit challenging getting the animal into the truck, though she got in there and didn't get injured, other than a little bleedy nose um, from herself banging herself, and the little one was easy to get into the truck. so. The footage I got was all from when we unloaded the animals.
rooster tail. Yeah. <laughs> what happened to him? Oh, it's okay. They just kicked some shit in my eye. Up right into his face. Oh, no. it's all good. I really appreciate my son Gabe and his friend Sam for helping me to pick up the sheep. I could good. not have done this by myself. The larger sheep is over a year old and pregnant, due in the next two weeks, and sister of our black and white girl. The little guy is a neutered male that we're growing as a meat animal. Here you see our new sheep made it safely through their jump off entry. They look like they're moving normally. We really should have had a ramp or high area to act as a ramp, but we don't have that yet. I do not recommend this jump off method. These sheep are from a large ranch. They're not pets and are only handled when needed. It was less stressful for them and for us to let them jump two and a half feet instead of lifting them out. My sheep seem a little concerned and worried, like they want to be reassured that everything is okay.